Welcome back to Desert Jewels. I'm Julie Loving Scott, your Texas licensed realtor here today. And I'm going to be talking to a senior mortgage loan originator. And today we want to discuss these important topics. Forbearance versus deferment, foreclosure versus short sale. So if you all would welcome Miss Brenda Aguirre. Hi, Brenda. Hi, Julie. Thank you for having me. I appreciate you coming on. I know I kind of caught you at the last minute and um, I know you're like a little camera shy, but I just want you to loosen up and help the people out here today uh, because I believe this is really important, especially since um, it. Uh, I saw an article saying that it is scheduled for June 30th for the eviction moratorium uh, and the foreclosure moratorium to end um, for um, the people that took advantage of that moratorium. So I am so glad you're here. So what I want you to do is first introduce yourself and tell them who you are and what it is that you do. Absolutely. So my name is Brenda Aguirre. I'm actually with Legacy Lending. I'm a senior mortgage loan originator. I've been in the industry about 15 years uh, from doing, being in charge, running a team to being a team. I pretty much done it all. So I am very, very, very excited to be here. And again, I just started with Legacy Lending and um, it's a great company. So absolutely, Julie, I'm here to try to see how much I can educate you and inform you of sometimes what you think you're doing may not always be exactly what it is you're doing. Okay. And I appreciate the fact that you pointed out there today, we're going to leave not just informed, but we're going to be educated today. So if you would, please, please define these words for us, starting with forbearance and then deferment, because we want to do those two differences first, because I believe they are most important. Okay, so your first one is forbearance, right? So forbearance basically is just repaying the amount of your loan that's paused for one lump sum after a forbearance period ends, okay? So you're able to pause it for whatever amount, but that's with your lender, okay? So deferment is something strictly, strictly with your lender, whoever your bro her mortgage broker is, whether it's a bank, credit union, investor. So what happens here is they actually stop and they defer it. So when they're actually deferring it, it's a time period. But on this deferment, what happens is it depends on the lender. Of, For example, you might be able to defer it for three months. Let's take example COVID that everyone went through. A lot of people took advantage of deferment. So deferment said, you know what, for three months, you don't have to pay, but two ways it's going to happen. Either you're going to pay it after the third month or you're going to pay it after whatever term you did it. Okay. okay. So foreclosure, foreclosure is going to be a little bit different. So basically foreclosure is an involuntary kind of in lieu of. So it's basically a repossession of your property. So it's foreclosure where the bank is actually going to take ownership, sell it to try to pay off what's owed on it, okay? Oh, now, a short sale is different. A short sale is, is that the buyer is actually gonna try to sell it, make up whatever the balance or deficiency is, and if it doesn't sell for the amount that's owed and the difference, at least it's a little bit different. It would only be for the deficiency, should there be one, but at that point, the buyer's still in charge of, of trying to settle and sell it and do the, pay off the financing, for example, with the lender or whoever they have their mortgage with. Okay, so on forbearance, let me know if I understood this correctly. With the forbearance, it's I call my, my lender and we work out an agreement that I have, let's say, three months. Three months, these next three months, I don't have to make the regular monthly payments for those three months. However, at the end of that third month, like day one going into the fourth month, I have to be prepared to have all of those three months ready to turn in to them versus a deferment, I can work it out with my lender to be able to put it at the end of the loan or we spread it out a little differently. So will you please like focus on those two right there for just a moment so people can clarify and help us understand how this moratorium 
is about to affect these decisions that were made last year. The um, end of the story, I'm sorry. Of course, no. So with forbearance, the interest is always going to accrue. There, it, there's no stopping it. Okay. So again, it, it's always going to accrue. The repayment on it is always going to be due in a lump sum. So at the end of the forbearance period. So whatever the forbearance period, be it three months, as you mentioned, you have to pay back everything, including that interest, and then move on with the payments. Oh, wow. So if that makes sense. Yes. So on deferment, what happens is you can, sometimes the interest will accrue, not all the time. That's between you and the lender, but you're able to repay it back over the time. See, and so that's, I want you all to take that away today that if you took advantage of the forbearance last year, uh, again, it's scheduled to end as of June 30th this year, uh, something may happen differently, but we want to inform you that this is the time that you need to call the lender. And if they don't call you, Brenda, I mean, you all can call Brenda because you see her information down here at the bottom. And Brenda is a, a resource. She uh, does not require you to be one of her clients. And you see her phone number here, 915-867-0338. Uh, Brenda, what are some of the questions they need to ask so they can make sure they understand what happened on their forbearance? So what we look for when we're actually reviewing the credit is a couple of things. For example, if you did a deferment and it's COVID, it'll stay a COVID-19 deferment. Okay. And on a deferment, the biggest, biggest thing that it's going to impact all the buyers is that normally, and it shouldn't, and you need to just verify this with your lender, it shouldn't affect your credit. Because this is an agreement that was placed to help assess and people that were struggling during mortgage right to stop and pause it so we don't want to penalize any type of home buyer that went through an actual economic you know status change or you know people that were shut down for several months so this was a way of saying we want to protect you and your asset your investment that's huge on a forbearance it doesn't work that way because what happens is again it can be reported and the biggest thing is that regardless if you're in a forbearance or a deferment type of program that's here to help you is you at least have to make three consecutive payments wow. from whatever that period ended hold up time out are you telling me that even though i took advantage of the forbearance i was still supposed to be making some type of payment when you come to refinance or do something on your mortgage, if you were placed on a deferment plan, some kind of modification program, you have to make three payments current before we can actually do anything with your loan to modify it, to refinance it, whether you did deferment or not. Okay. And I heard you say something about you all would look, where are you all going to be able to find out whether or not the forbearance or the deferment was uh, under the COVID uh, relief program? So it's actually on their credit report. We have seen it where someone thinks they're in COVID-19, it'll specify COVID-19 deferment. Wow. It would, it, it, it's a difference from just your typical forbearance because if it's not a COVID, it, there's a lot more, every, every loan is gonna be different, Julie. But that's where we start looking saying, okay, you know what, maybe they just didn't report it as a COVID-19. You may have to call your lender to get some kind of documentation. So whenever you're doing these modification plans, deferment, you always want to make sure you keep that document because that fine print is actually what's going to save you or not. And, and it'll allow us to help you if we need to fight something on the credit bureau side for you. Okay, so I hope you all heard that loud and clear. Be sure that the verbiage uh, that your agreement is under or protected under the COVID-19, uh, it has to have certain wording for it. Okay, so Brenda, we don't, I know you're busy because I know uh, our um, brokers tries to keep you busy, but <laughs> I want you to take a moment and explain the difference, uh, go over the difference one more time between foreclosure and short sale. And based on my understanding and experience, you all prefer a short sale all day, every day over a foreclosure. And tell us why. Yes. 
And actually, I wish I could tell you, we really don't prefer, but if we have to have an option, then absolutely a short sale is the way to go. So foreclosures are basically involuntary. This is, I'm giving back the property. I cannot afford to make the payments due to whatever the circumstance, change of employment, lack of employment from one income household or two income households to one. It's unfortunate, but things happen. Life happens. So foreclosures is an involuntary where the lender takes legal action to control of and sell your property. Homeowners are the ones who do short sales. Okay, so a short sale, the homeowner is responsible for any deficiencies payable to the lender. And a short sale allows people to repurchase another home while foreclosures, as I mentioned, affect the borrower's credit scores. Okay, so with a uh, short sale, I know like at the end of the day, because you all have programs in place now for homeowners that before we even get to this point, if you all let someone, if we let let you all know, hey, I'm experiencing a crisis, I'm in a situation, my income has changed. Like you said, we went from two, three incomes, now we're down to one, and uh, there are programs in place. So could you kind of give me an idea of what you all are able to offer um, for people that may have experienced that income shift and you know, we're trying to prevent short sale and foreclosure? Of course. So we always suggest, um, and not necessarily just coming with me, talking to your lender before you're going to do a short sale or a foreclosure. What most important is that we don't ever want anyone to lose their house. We're not in the market to be selling homes. We don't want to take your home and then go and sell it. That's not what a lender does. Basically, you're married to your lender for 30 years, whether we service your loan or not. That's the reality. And we want you in that home until you don't want to be there, but of course doing it the right way. So before you want to do a short sale or a foreclosure, not that anyone wants to, but you want to talk to your lender because what can happen is sometimes it can place you in a modification plan. It's, you know, lowering your payment, extending it. And there's options, you know, before your credit starts getting damaged, because once you stop paying and the, you get a late, you know, when they can drop your credit score, sometimes 100 points and especially your mortgage. So you go from be, from trying to help you modify it where we're able to because we don't want you losing the house to you being put in a position that unfortunately sometimes things are unforeseen and you do have to do a short sale. And this is where you would, you know, get, for example, Julie. Ms. Jelly, Ms. Julie Loving Scott, you know, it's Jelly. I'm Jelly here that she would actually go and help you so that she can put it on the market. And, you know, this is a prime market to do it. If you're going to sell, this is when you want to sell it. Get Julie to list your property, get the funds, and then maybe get into a smaller home, downsized, right? But you'd be able to now have cash to be able to do that. But again, there's so many options that you may not be experiencing, you know, or, or be aware of. You may take equity out to consolidate everything. And instead of having all these little mortgage, your mortgage payment, all these extra payments, you just have one payment and it's easier to do than, than all these realms of, you know, I have to pay this, I can't pay that, I'm late here. So we want to help you by doing what's best for you and giving you options. And then if it's, you know, we can't help you modify it, then okay, have you thought of selling your home? Well, you try selling it so that you make some money off of it, pay off everything you owe and keep the difference. Because if the bank doesn't, I'll say here we, if we have to sell it because we come and take the property from you, you're not getting anything, even if you put equity in for 20 years. Whatever you owe, whatever we make, we're keeping it. The bank's keeping it. You've worked so hard for the bank to come take it. We don't want to take it. Make money off of it and sell it before you ruin your credit. So again, it's just about providing you options. But for me, I would rather sell it, get someone to help me sell it, make some money, pay off any deficiency, anything I have with the mortgage, and then figure out what I'm going to do at that point. Yes. And like you said, right now, even across the United States, this is the perfect time uh, to put the home on the market. Uh, buyers are paying over asking price in a lot of situations. So that may be an option. And uh, just a, a quick uh, shameless plug, uh, not so much. Um, but that's one of the things that drove me into uh, becoming certified as a financial coach, because I realized that uh, people were not taking advantage of opportunities with their lender. Uh, you know, the, they immediately go into the oh my God, I'm going to lose my home mode versus knowing that, no, really the 
uh, mortgage company, they want you to stay in that home. They are willing to help you stay in the home. And that's one of the things I was uh, able to start sharing with um, clients is uh, my, my financial coaching clients is there are people and resources out there that are willing to help you stay in the home. Um, we I brought up foreclosure and short sale because I want you to know that if if it all comes down to it, um, if you're not able to sell before a short sale comes into play, um, if you had to pick one over the other, it would be a short sale. A short sale. How, and um, Brenda, will you talk about the recovery period from a short sale versus recovering from a foreclosure? Yes. And I'm glad you said that, Julie, because I was just about to tell you because I didn't answer you completely why a short sale is better, right? Because we always want you to do it versus involuntarily taking it something because honestly, it's not involuntary. We're basically going and getting it from you. It, it's really what it is. So on a short sale, the waiting period is. So let me just talk about a couple of programs just so you understand. On a conventional loan, you're looking at two to four years on a short sale, okay? On a foreclosure, you're looking at three to seven. So for example, before an extenuating circumstance used to be a divorce. Now that's no longer the case, not even in bankruptcies. Is that the case that that's an extenuating wow. circumstance? So two to four years, you know, focusing on two, four is way better than three to seven years because at least you know that's four years you're saving, that's four years of you reestablishing your credit and working on it should everything fall down. On an FHA loan, it's three years, regardless three years. Um, both defer, I mean, sorry, short sale and for, for uh, closure. On a USDA, it's also three years, okay, um, on the, both sides. And then on VA, normally it's two years on a short sale, but can be longer on a foreclosure. And they're mm -hmm. a lot stricter on what you have to do, uh, guidelines on reestablishing credit. So there's a lot more requirements when it comes to government loans. And the reason, another reason I wanted to bring this up is um, I believe in being transparent. My husband and I, we thought we were good to go, but then 2008 happened. And um, we, we PCS to uh, Fort Benning in Georgia. We had our home on the market. 2008 happened just as we put our home on the market. And it ended up having to be a short sale. However, um, like you like you said earlier, and we want to remind you, contact your lenders because the lender we had at the time, they were like, look, in real life, we don't want this. We don't want you to go into foreclosure. We're trying to avoid short sales. They modified our loan um, as much as they could, um, as long as they could. I think it took us almost eight months to get to the point of short sale because of the shift in income. And, um, but when we got to the short sale, they even made modifications during the short sale to allow the short sale to happen to keep us out of foreclosure. Yeah. So all of that to say this, you all talk to your lenders, talk to your loan officer that you use. If you don't have anybody you can talk to locally, you can just call Brenda. Brenda is available. Now, there may be some limitations on what she can say, uh, varying from state to state, but then there's some information that is just, you know, straightforward, streamlined information about it across the board. Is that correct, Brenda? Yes, absolutely. And we're always here to help you. And, you know, if we can help you, absolutely. But we do recommend that you reach out to your lender because the lender knows exactly what they did. And again, we're really trying to help you. But you may have to take that initiative that if that loan officer isn't calling, you keep calling them, you know, because our job is to help you. And for me, it's it's not about closing that loan with you, but it may be, you know what, I cannot do it or you're better off with them because they're not going to charge you all these fees or a flat fee that I may charge you, but they already have everything with you. They're going to modify it without you having to go through all of the stuff that you may have to do. So, of course, it's about making it easier, efficient. But most importantly, you have to be educated to make the decision and what works for best for you, because what may work best for you may not be for someone else or me, because I'm not in that position. I'm just there to help you, give you options so that you do make that best educated decision on the behalf of you and your family. And I think that's that's all that needs to be said. So if you would, uh, we can put Brenda's information back up there. If you have any questions about how to move forward with foreclosure, 
um, uh, I'm sorry, to avoid foreclosure and short sale. Um, if you need information about the forbearance process, the deferment process, if you're kind of iffy about calling your particular lender, call Brenda at 915-867-0338. And like I said, there's some general information and guidance that she can provide to you so you can make an informed, educated decision about what to do concerning your mortgage loan. And Brenda, I want to thank you, thank you, thank you so much for taking time out of your extremely busy schedule to do this episode with us. I greatly appreciate you and I hope you'll come back again soon. Thank you. And thank you for getting rid of my nerves. I enjoyed being here, Jilly. I appreciate it. Thank you. You're welcome. So we'll see you next time on the next episode of Desert Jewels. I'm Julie Loving Scott. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.